address you in the name of the Arab Republic of Egypt as a representative of her voice and her vision and as representative of a noble country that has its own civilizational contributions throughout history and which carries out an important role in promoting international and regional peace and stability. Egypt was at the forefront of countries that joined the United Nations and has contributed to designing the goals and principles underpinning the raison d'etre of the United Nations. Egypt has for decades been committed fully to the charter towards the promotion of international peace and prosperity and sustainable development. However, our world today faces a persistent question related to the efficiency of multilateral action and multilateral system and how efficient is this system or capable this system is to grapple with the current challenges. In fact, a lot of discussions have been held regarding the reform and development of this international organization, especially after developing countries, including Egypt, have found themselves grappling with cascading and interlocking crises in which they have no stake and without adequate support from international organizations that have been established and created to support our legitimate development aspirations. Having said that, I would like to share with you the Egyptian vision, which wishes to shed light on a number of priorities to restore trust and efficiency of multilateral action as follows. First, in a word mainly characterized by interdependence and globalization, no party is secure unless everyone is secure, and no region is stable unless all regions are stable. Our collective security lies in our joint action and in the application of the principles of the UN Charter rather than selectivity and double standards. The challenges that we are grappling with, given their complexity, interrelatedness, and diversity, such as conflicts, food insecurity, and pervasive terrorism, to name a few, this makes it incumbent of us to find solutions. However, we find that the international organization still is still incapable to find those solutions. And this illustrates that we are totally far from achieving the principles and purposes of the Charter. The serious repercussions of the conflict in Ukraine has proved that we cannot guarantee the stability and security of any party without uh, exclusively of the other. Thus, Egypt has taken active steps uh, with her Arab and African neighbors through creating the Arab Contact Group and participating in the African Leaders Initiative to put an end to the bloodshed and to find a peaceful settlement for the Russian-Ukrainian crisis. Secondly, the multilateral international action in the post-World War II era has unveiled a structural deficiency in the way whereby we address political, economic, social, and security crises, which was mainly characterized by the monopoly by major powers of the right to take a decision in total indifference to the aspirations of peoples and and communities. And in this regard, we insist on the Iselwini consensus and the CERT declaration to undo the historic just that was, uh, injustice that was sustained by our uh, continent by way of expanding the African representation in the Security Council by securing two permanent seats for Africa with full privileges and prerogatives. Also, Egypt has supported the mechanisms towards promoting joint action with developing countries, and it was in the forefront of countries that founded the um, groupings of those countries. And we look forward to playing an active role in the BRICS to advocate the to the interests and uh, aspirations of 30 percent of the global uh, economy in the global south. Third, we are in dire need to restore trust in the economic tools of the global system to enable the same to address the developmental, urgent development aspirations of peoples and to take all the steps necessary to prevent conflicts. And this makes it incumbent of us to 
uphold the role of the international organization. And in this regard, uh, it is very important for the international community to synergize its efforts and to take constructive uh, steps in order to reform the international financial structure and to develop the international financial system uh, to enable developing countries to regain and to uh, go back on track of uh, achieving the SDGs by way of uh, promoting the uh, uh, financing tools, including the SDRs from the IMF. And this also calls upon us to look into the best ways of uh, allocating those SDRs in addition to the importance of shedding light and developing the practices of multilateral development banks uh, by way of creating more financing tools such as concessional loans and grants in addition to improving the access by developing countries to those banks according to their national priorities. It's high time we reformed the, uh, the international, uh, the World Trade Organization on the basis of rules. Actually, if you are speaking about acceleration of uh, the achievement of SDG, this should be coupled with looking into ways to relieve, uh, to relieve poor countries of their indebtedness. Otherwise, this will cause more uh, economic crunch. Thus, we have to take immediate steps to address this crisis by way of creating a sustainable and comprehensive mechanism to look into uh, the debts of low-income and middle-income countries, in addition to looking into the restructuring of uh, the complex structuring uh, structure of debts, as well as the patterns of indebtedness, as well as swap of uh, debts through development projects. This will eventually transform the challenges of debts into an opportunity towards just transition to green economy. Fourth, the word is grappling with an existential threat, namely climate change, as climate events has become part and parcel of our daily life, including floods, hurricanes, and drought. International reports stress that the world is not on track to address the climate challenge, especially in relation to the adequate financing for developing countries to support the implementation of their national pledges. and. Um, in this regard, and given the fact that Egypt is totally convinced uh, of the importance of transformation in Sharm el-Sheikh in COP27, we managed to mobilize international consensus to achieve climate justice, and we reached balanced decisions based on the agreed uh, responsibilities and principles as per the UNFCCC and the Paris Agreement and through an international uh, as an international community we managed to achieve historic progress as regards climate change as well as the establishment of a track towards just transformation uh, in development uh, also we focused on expansion of using renewable energy as President of the COP, and given uh, that the efforts made at present are not up to the challenge, and given the fact that certain countries have reneged on their pledges, and some other countries have even posed uh, protective customs and uh, and in order to achieve success in the COP28 in the UAE, I would like to stress the importance of the pledges and the agreements that we have reached, especially the loss and damage fund and the importance of providing the finances necessary to achieve this goal. Fifth, our vision for developing this international organization should take into consideration the new challenges, especially the scarcity of natural resources, including water, 
drinking water, which was enough for about one billion persons in the last millennium, today it needs to be adequate for almost 8 billion. That's why we do welcome the outcomes of the historic conference of the United Nations for Water in 2023. And in this regard, I would like to highlight my country as Egypt is going through a severe water crisis as well. And it is one of the least rainy countries, whereas the population of Egypt exceeds 105 million persons. This led to uh, a decrease in the per capita quota of water in addition to the water deficiency which deficit of 50 percent and this compels us to reuse the limited amount of water available for more than one time also we do import virtual water in the form of food uh, for 15 billion dollars annually Egypt depends on the river Nile by 98 percent thus Egypt is more vulnerable to any unsustainable use of the water of the river. And here I would like to stress our unwavering position, which is based on the international law as we do refuse any unilateral procedures regarding the management of transboundary water. For example, the Ethiopian Renaissance Dam, which, wa uh, uh, which was created without consultation and without uh, previous adequate studies or even other studies for the impacts of the riparian states, but even Ethiopia has went has gone further by filling and operating unilaterally this dam, thus violating the uh, principles of the international uh, uh, law and the uh, declaration of the principles of 2015 and the presidential statement of 2021. Notwithstanding these unilateral practices on the part of Ethiopia, Egypt is keen on seriously engaging in the current negotiations which has extended for more than one decade in order to achieve or to reach a binding uh, agreement on the rules of filling and operation uh, which maintains the joint interests and we continue um, honestly to work with Ethiopia to reach an agreement which takes into consideration the interests of Egypt, the Sudan and Ethiopia. And it should not be erroneously thought that uh, the, uh, the de facto, a de facto would be imposed on us. Sixth, one of the most important pillars of the international organization is that it can promote human rights, uh, whether uh, be they political, economic, social or cultural, away from politicization. Or, um, or double standards. And I'm here wondering what is the moral uh, what is uh, what is the moral evidence of the sublimity of one uh, system of values as compared to others. We do warn against uh, the, uh, the phenomena of discrimination and hatred such as Islamophobia uh, and the uh, manifestations thereof, including, uh, including setting the Holy Quran on fire. As these events are very dangerous. And in this regard, we would like to commend the uh, Danish initiative. We also believe uh, in the responsibility of the state and its institutions and its communities to promote human rights. Thus, Egypt at the national level has taken strides in promoting the rights of, the, of her citizens, and it has launched the National Strategy for Human Rights and the Strategy for Enabling the Egyptian Woman, the strategy uh, of an, uh, of fighting violence against women and Egypt has taken steps to enable youth as well as the disabled. Uh, Egypt also gives a priority to the principle of citizenship, fighting discrimination and protecting religious freedoms. Seventh, the United Nations have been created in order to spare and save the successive generations from the scourge of conflict. Notwithstanding the foregoing, the world has through the last 78 years witnessed wars and and conflicts that have claimed the lives of millions of innocent people. However, this should not uh, make us 
lose faith in the United Nations. And we do believe in the principles of the Charter thus Egypt has for half a century been working to be a pillar of stability and security and it was the first to make peace in the Middle in the Middle East and currently we are very concerned regarding the practices of the occupation power in the Palestinian territories the matter that might threaten the uh, Aqaba and the Sham al-Sheikh um, meetings and the outcomes thereof. And we do support the legitimate rights of the Palestinian people to establish their independent state on the borders of 4th of June 1967 with Eastern Jerusalem as its capital according to the Security Council and the General Assembly resolutions. And we call upon all powers loving, uh, loving peace to take this opportunity to salvage the two uh, state solutions. Egypt is also working uh, towards creating peace in the Sudan, Libya, Syria, and Yemen according to the international law and the international legitimacy and Egypt supports the uh, efforts, the anti-terrorism efforts in Africa through our through our co-presidency uh, of the Global Forum of Anti-Terrorism. Egypt has launched the uh, summit for the neighboring countries of the Sudan in order to coordinate the efforts of all countries uh, neighboring the Sudan to settle the current crisis and to mitigate the humanitarian repercussions thereof. We are also working towards a ceasefire and finding a sustainable political uh, solution. Egypt also supports a Libyan political solution according to the principle of national ownership. Uh, meanwhile, it's important to overcome the transitional period and to uh, start and to conduct the presidential and parliamentary uh, elections. Meanwhile, Egypt also stresses the importance of the withdrawal, the immediate and, uh, and unconditional uh, withdrawal of all foreign forces from Libya, as well as all the mercenaries from Libya. And we do renew our refusal uh, and the categorical refusal and rejection of uh, uh, encroaching on the legitimate, uh, uh, on the uh, legislation role of the uh, Libyan parliament. Ladies and gentlemen, in conclusion, that was our vision to restore trust in the multilateral organization by giving impetus to action according to the principles and purposes of the Charter of the United Nations and the rules of the international community, as well as capitalizing on the role of international organizations, chiefly amongst which the United Nations. Thank you. I thank the Minister for Foreign Affairs of Egypt. Excellencies, we have heard the last speaker in the general debate for this meeting.